Do so for a while, too. Time having arrived, I declare the City Council meeting in order for Monday evening, October 26, 2015. Stand and let's salute our American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilors, just before we do begin, I do want to um, indicate that we're going to take a, a quick moment of silence uh, for a person that, that passed over the, uh, over the week, and that was uh, for Mrs. Janice Byers. I'm sure all of you know who Janice was, a uh, great uh, champion to the City of Champions, um, been here for many, many years, a great educator to the City of Brockton, a uh, great teacher at the Kennedy School, great involvement in uh, city government as well, served the uh, people of uh, Ward 3 as the school committee representative for 10 years, and um, unfortunately um, just lost a little battle with uh, an illness, but uh, her and her husband both, uh, who passed, uh, Bill passed in uh, January of this, uh, this year, so we both uh, miss them entirely, and, and I think it's only appropriate that we uh, give her the least to do of uh, a nice moment of, of silence and appreciate all her efforts that she did for this city. <laughs> Councilors, thank you, and may she and he both uh, rest in peace. Mr. President, Councilor Sullivan. I'm going to make a motion we take agenda items 1 through 14 collectively. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. We're going to take items 1 through 14 collectively. All in favor of that? Opposed? We'll take them collectively. Madam Clerk. The following items are petitions of polls on West Elm Street from Verizon in National Grid. Um, one poll to remove one poll, 482-1, westerly side of Carlton. To place one new poll, 555.5 on the easterly side of Doris. One new poll, 789.5 on the easterly side of Montgomery Street. To relocate one poll, 50-10 on westerly side of Brett Street. Relocate one poll, 58-11 on easterly side of Byron Ave. To place one poll, 58-11.5 on the westerly side of North Byron to place a new poll, 346 and a half, on the westerly side of Revere Street. Relocate one poll, 224-16, easterly side of Winifred Road. Place one new poll, 417-15, westerly side of Belcher Ave. To relocate one poll, 14-8, easterly side of Newbury Street. Place one new poll, 32-28S, on easterly side of Marine Street. To place three new poles on Belmont Ave. One pole, 88-10.5, easterly side of Belmont Ave. One new pole, 88-S-10.5-S, <coughs> on the westerly side of Belmont Ave. And to place one new pole, 88-10 and three quarters, on the westerly side of Belmont Ave. To place Go ahead. To place five new poles, relocate 42 poles, remove one pole, and have one pole remain on West Elm Street, and relocate one pole, 997-1, on westerly side of West Elm Terrace. Time having arrived, to clear this hearing open. If there's anyone here in favor, I would ask them to come forward and state their name and address to the clerk. These are for the items 1 through 14. Hi, how are you? Hi. <laughs> My name is Kelly Curry. I represent Verizon. And this all has to do with the um, reconstruction of West Elm Street, the mass DOT job. So all the poles have been kind of restructured for spanning and clearances. Very good. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. I assume that everything's been checked for driveway cuts and for uh, uh, any, any issues with anybody coming out of their driveways? Correct. It actually doesn't affect any of the driveways. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Is there anyone else here uh, that would like to be heard in favor? Please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk. Seeing none, I'll declare that part of the hearing closed. Anybody here in opposition to this? Uh... Okay, why don't you come forth and state your name to the clerk. Um, Beverly Post, 503 West Elm. Yes. And um, I just don't really have enough, that's my house. Um, I, 
some concerns I have is what's happening with the street? Are they going to make a highway out of it? I mean, are they widening it? What's happening to the sidewalk? Um, I mean, West Elm is a, is a beautiful, you know, we've invested a lot of money into our house, and I want to make sure that people aren't going to be speeding by. Uh, at this point, I'm going to allow the city council from Ward 1, since he represents that area, just to give you a little insight of what's going on with the, the, the renovation. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You, so the road is being totally rebuilt, same design as, as is. There, uh, it's a total rebuild, not just blacktop, which is wonderful. The state's actually paying for this. Sidewalks are being replaced completely. Trees are being replaced. There will be lights at Ash Street and lights at Newbury Street farther down. Uh, all the sewer pipes being replaced, gas pipes have already been replaced. Um, so it's, we've been working with the state trying to get this done for, because uh, obviously uh, 503, so you're uh, right near um, Belcher? No, farther down. About the 10th house from the West Junior High. Okay. And uh, obviously you know how bad the road is to drive on, so it's, it's being blacktopped, but not just a coating, of, not just a coat, which a lot of times is all it's done in the city. It's actually being brought right down to the base and being rebuilt. So it'll be a totally rebuilt street, but the exact same setup as it is now. So it won't be any wider no. than it is now? No. Yes. And the sidewalk will remain? Just they're being rebuilt, rebuilt, yes. Rebuilt in the same width? Yeah, exactly. So basically they're not changing anything? Not changing the uh, layout at all. It's just uh, totally being rebuilt. Okay. Well, thank you. That helps with that concern. Thank you. Thank you, you ma'am. Anyone else here in... Uh, not so much opposition, but have a concern? Yes. Well, I, I just I do have a question then. If everything is staying the same, then why are the poles being changed? So, I, I mean, because that just doesn't make any sense to me. If everything's staying the same, it wouldn't make any sense that we would be spending money when obviously the state... Well, we don't spend this money, but uh, it has to do with... Well, wait with a minute. Well, who's paying for it then? The, the moving of the poles Verizon pays for, National Grid and Verizon. Okay. And, and it has to do with wheelchair access for uh, any streets that are rebuilt have to be rebuilt under the ADA compliance. Okay. So, uh, again, I think it's important for people to understand that. Most respectfully, Councillor Cruz, we all do pay. If we have Verizon, we pay. So uh, this is my point is, is that, you know, to, to just say we're just moving things and not having an explanation for why I think is, is troublesome for anybody to, to appreciate. So... Okay, well, I, I mean, I disagree, but the, well, uh, the poles are being moved because of, the, because of how the access has to be to the, uh, to the sidewalks under federal ADA laws. So are the sidewalks then being built to be ADA Absolutely compliant? Absolutely, they have to be. Yes, which they have in, to be. And at this point, some of them are not. None of them are. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I declare that part of the hearing closed. At this time, councils will act upon uh, at the end of the meeting in regards to these uh, 14 matters. Madam Clerk, we'll continue. We have the report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of October 19, 2015. Accepted and placed on file. The communication from the Mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws and the requirements of Massachusetts Department of Revenue Bulletin 2015-07B requesting the City Council authorize the amortization of the FY 2015 <coughs> snow and ice removal deficit of $2,459,730.62 and not more than three equal installments beginning FY 2016. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990 certifying the adoption of an order to permit the amortization of the snow and ice deficit over three fiscal years. However, it's the CFO's recommendation that instead the, city, the city's present access levy capacity, which is adequate to eliminate that deficit entirely, be utilized to do so. Accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor, in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending the City Council authorize the appropriation of $2.8 mm -hmm. for the purpose of funding through the Legal Bond Council in order to provide funding through either borrowing or leasing purchasing, purchase financing for an energy service agreement between City and Amoresco Inc. This agreement will result in the purchase and installation of energy savings equipment in City buildings. 
the total of annual savings from the contract guaranteed by Amoresco exceeds $4.5 million. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO certifying the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have the appointment of Officer David Santos of the Brockton Police Department as a way of trucks in the city of Brockton. Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. The report was favorable. The question is on confirmation by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. No. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. No. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The confirmation is confirmed. We've ordered that the City Council authorize the acceptance of a donation of two retired dial a bat minibuses from Brockton Area Transit Authority to City of Brockton Police Department. The only stipulation is that the Brockton Police Department pays the cost of leased tires, a total of $800 for both vehicles. The department will do this from the FY16 budget. Read and but referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. The report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Yes. The order is adopted. The appropriation of $500 from Spectra Energy Foundation to City of Brockton Fire Department Spectra, Spectra Energy Foundation Grant Fund. The intended use for these funds is towards the purchase of one laptop computer to be used in the field for hazardous materials responses, code enforcement, and fire prevention activities. There's a non-matching grant with no cost to the city. Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance, and the report is favorable. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The order is adopted. <coughs> we have an appropriation of $300 from Harbor One Bank to City of Brockton Fire Department. The intended use in the area of youth education and prevention. This donation with an, this is a donation with no cost to the city. Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance, and the report is favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Tenney. The order is adopted. We have an appropriation of $571,152 from McKinney Vento. Education of Homeless Children and Youth Assistance Acts of FY 2016 to non-net school spending budget. This act provides funds to reimburse some costs of the mandated transportation associated with homeless students and provide additional buses served to all el eligible students. Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance and the report is favorable. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kennedy. The order is adopted. We have an appropriation of $15,000 from Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners State Plan for Library Services and Technology Acts LSTA Direct Grant Programming entitled Serving Tweens and Teens to Brockton Library Department Library Services Technology Act Direct Grant Program Fund. These funds will be dispersed by the MBL in amount of $7,500 for fiscal year 2016 and additional $7,500 for fiscal year 2017. These funds are for the STEM project which works to support and improve science and technology education. There's no match requirement. Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance, and the report is favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kennedy. The order is adopted. Order that according to the requirements of Massachusetts Department of Revenue Bulletin 2015-07B, requesting the City Council authorize the amortization of the FY 2015 snow and ice removal deficit of $2,459,730.62 and not more than three equal installments beginning FY 2016. Referred to finance. That the sum of 
million is appropriated to pay costs of various energy conservation improvements to city buildings, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. Such improvements are made in accordance with an energy services agreement between the city and Amoresco, Inc. Referred to finance. Order that the DPW Commissioner is authorized to issue one industrial sewer connection at 353 Howard Street, parcel ID 182-43, plot 40-1, for the property owned by John Lyons Air Distribution Company. Referred to finance. President. Councilor Sullivan. Make a motion to take uh, agenda items 29 through 42 collectively. I also am going to make a motion that the clerk only read the address relative to granting. She need not uh, explain the, uh, the distance again. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? We're going to take them collectively. And, and Madam Clerk, just read the, uh, the address. With the granting of Carlton Street, Doris Ave, Montgomery Street, Brett Street, Byron Ave, North Byron Ave, Revere Street, Winifred Road, Belcher Ave, Newbury Street, Marine Street, Belmont Ave, um, West Elm Street, and West Elm Terrace. By hand vote, Councilors, all in favor? Opposed? All approved. Councilors, just um, before we do depart, just a couple of things to keep in your calendar. Next Monday evening, there will not be a finance meeting. No finance meeting next Monday evening. It's the night before election. Our next finance meeting will be Monday, November the 16th. There is nothing pressing, but we'll have other matters at our next council meeting, which will be November the 9th. Um, so everyone has that right. No meeting next Monday. Finance meeting will be November 16th. Next city council meeting will be November the 9th here at 8 p.m. Prior to that, you'll be receiving an invitation because we're going to be doing the dedication of the Mayor Paul V. Stadinsky building on November the 9th. Um, with a little bit of um, greet and, and eat a little bit too and uh, have some other elected officials there as well and then we'll come over here to council at 8 o'clock p.m. that evening. So I just want to make sure that everybody end, uh, understands that and, and I just want to put out a quick note that tomorrow evening I'll be hosting a Ward 3 meeting at the Kennedy School tomorrow evening Tuesday October 27th at the Kennedy School at, at 7 p.m. Any other councillors have any uh, other business? Councillor Sullivan? Want a personal privilege? Go ahead. Uh, councillors, I just, uh, as I do, uh, I've done this for the last 10 years. Uh, those watching, those in, in attendance, as the President just stated, next Tuesday, November 3rd is Election Day here in the City of Brockton. Polls are open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Please do your civic duty and vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Studinsky. Mr. President, a moment of personal privilege. Yes, you may, sir. I want to remind everybody an announcement I made last week, 7 p.m., Wednesday night, October 28th, There'll be a meeting on the power plant at the Davis School, 7 p.m., Wednesday, October 28th. And that's for anybody from any part of the city or any part of any city or town. And thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilors, also, I do want to uh, refresh your um, minds to when we met last uh, week at Finance and we had the people here from Aquaria and uh, obtaining information from them and you saw the information that we did receive um, a week or two or two weeks prior to that that the clerk had uh, brought uh, to us uh, at last week's meeting which was the three uh, uh, ring binders there with all the information well at that point in time under um, a motion that um, Councilor Sullivan had mentioned and I had uh, offered it up as well as to have a, a committee come together to go through the information and hopefully we'll have that information soon so I'm going to appoint that that committee and I'm going to make uh, uh, Chairman uh, uh, Councilor Sullivan as the chair and I'm also going to put on Ward 1 Councilor Tim Cruz, I'm also going to put on Ward 6 Councilor Michelle Dubar and also going to put on Councilor at Large Moises Rodriguez to serve on that committee and for you people to look at that information and bring back um, uh, to the uh, City Council your findings of, of what is in those uh, uh, binders as well as we're all going to be receiving information hopefully within within due time so um, I just turn to you council I know I know we're all busy and, and as chair I know you said you'd take it on and I know you can control uh, or make contact with our legal um, uh, attorney here as well as to uh, when you can meet and uh, you people can uh, iron that out okay thank you Mr. President thank you anything else councillors any other business to come before this meeting this evening see you now meeting adjourned <laughs>